السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد All thanks and praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may his peace and blessings be upon his last and final messenger his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of times Welcome to the last and final episode of Reflections 2022 Thank you for joining us this entire month of Ramadan Thank you to the entire Muslim Matters team. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless all of you and accept all of your good deeds. Thank you to all of the you know, behind the scenes people here at the Institute of Knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in knowledge and in practice. We have been exploring various reflections um, in the Quran. And I want to close off this series by highlighting how important, how significant it is for us to connect with the Qur'an, to actually engage with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to nurture and develop a real strong intimate relationship with the Book of Allah, to take it as our guide, to take it as our roadmap towards success, not only in this life, but more importantly, in the life to come. And in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذِ الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَا رَبِّ O oh my Lord, إِنَّ قَوْمِ That truly my people اتَّخَذُوا هَذِ الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Have taken this book, have taken this Qur'an as something to be ignored, as something to be abandoned, as something to be left behind. Now the context of this verse is the opposition and rejection the Prophet ﷺ was facing from the people of Quraysh. That the Prophet ﷺ, the initial response he got from his own community was one of opposition and rejection. And they tried literally everything they could to stop him and prevent him from spreading the truth, from spreading the message of Islam. They would do anything they possibly could to stop and prevent people from listening to him as well. And one of the methods they came out with was to make these wild accusations and to accuse the Prophet ﷺ of na'udhu billah being a poet or a madman or accuse him of being a magician. And they would claim that the Qur'an is simply poetry or it's magic or that he learned it from someone else or that it's a product of human behavior or uh, it's a product of human effort. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expressing the feelings, the emotions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That yes, he is the last and final messenger. He is the most perfect example of a human being to walk on the face of this earth. He is khatamul anbiya'i wa rusul. He is the seal of all prophets and messengers. He is the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the leader of all prophets and messengers as well. But at the end of the day, he's also a human being. And as a human being, he experienced emotions. That when his people would reject him, when his people would say these types of things regarding him and regarding his message and regarding the truth, it would hurt him. It would cause him that emotional pain. You know, that pain of, of opposition, that pain of rejection. And also because of his deep concern for his community. He was deeply, genuinely, sincerely concerned for his people's salvation. He wanted to save as many people as possible from eternal damnation. So when his people are turning against him and when his people are opposing him, he feels that building up and he will make this complaint. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ That the Messenger says, Ya Rabbi, O oh my people, إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا That my people, my nation, my community, has taken this book as something to be abandoned, as something to be ignored, as something to be left behind. And then immediately after in the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles and comforts and reassures the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, reminding him to be firm and steadfast, to be patient, to persevere, to continue on in his mission. Now that is one understanding of the verse. Another understanding is that this is a complaint of the Prophet Sallallahu on the Day of Judgment. That on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu 
is going to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, inna qawmi ittakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. That my own people, my own followers, my own community has taken this book, has taken the Qur'an as something to be ignored, as something to be left behind, as something to be abandoned. Imagine the Prophet والسلام, is going to complain about certain members of his ummah, about certain people from his community that abandoned the Qur'an. That is something that is very scary to think about. And we have to ensure that we are not among the people who have abandoned the Qur'an, who have taken the Qur'an as something to be left behind, who have moved away from its guidance and its teachings, who no longer look towards the Qur'an uh, for the solutions for all of our problems, both personal and social, economic, whatever it may be. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, commenting on this verse, he said that مَنْ لَمْ يَقْرَأِ الْقُرْآنِ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ Whoever doesn't recite the Qur'an, they have abandoned it. They have ignored it. وَمَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَمْ يَتَدَبَّرْهُ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ And whoever recites the Qur'an, but they don't reflect upon it, they have abandoned it. وَمَنْ قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنِ وَتَدَبَّرَهُ وَلَمْ يَعْمَلْ بِهِ فَقَدْ هَجَرَ And whoever reads the Qur'an and reflects upon it, but doesn't act upon it, then they have also abandoned it. So these are three different layers, three different categories of abandoning the Qur'an that I'm sure all of us have seen, have experienced, or perhaps ourselves are dealing with. So it is our responsibility to make sure that we are not among those people. And the best way for us to do so is by fulfilling the rights the Qur'an has upon us. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rights upon us that we have to fulfill. Just like we have rights upon each other, the Qur'an has certain rights upon us. Number one, recitation. It is our responsibility to ensure that we are reciting the Qur'an regularly and consistently. Ideally, we should be reciting the Qur'an on a daily basis. That one portion of our day should be dedicated to reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala along with understanding them. So reading a translation along with it or reading a tafsir, a book of Quranic exegesis or Quranic commentary along with it as well. Uthman radiallahu anhu would say that if a person's heart is pure, then they will never be satiated with the Quran. Meaning they will always continue to want to recite it and learn and connect with it as much as possible. And he would say that, you know, not a day goes by except that I look in the Mus'haf. So that should be part of our daily routine. Number one, recitation. Number two, memorization. That we should all should try our best to memorize as much Qur'an as possible. Now that doesn't mean every single individual has to become a hafiz of the Qur'an. That's not a requirement, that's not necessary, that's not fard, that's not wajib. But all of us should have some portion of the Qur'an memorized. And it shouldn't be that the Qur'an that I memorized when I was 8, 9, 10 years old is the same amount that I have memorized when I'm 28, 29 years old. There should be this gradual progression. We should be increasing the amount of Qur'an we have memorized as we progress through life. Again, that doesn't mean we all have to become huffad, but memorize as much as possible. The Prophet ﷺ said, a heart that does not have any Qur'an in it is like a abandoned, desolate house. So we have to illuminate and bring life to our hearts with memorization of the Qur'an. Number three is listening. That along with reciting and memorizing, it is also important to listen to the Qur'an being recited. And when we're listening to the Qur'an, we should be listening with absolute 100% focus and concentration and mindfulness we're listening attentively. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and when the Qur'an is being recited, فَاسْتَمِعُوا Listen to it carefully. وَأَنْسِتُوا Be silent. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you can receive and benefit from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, we have recitation, 
memorization, listening, number four, contemplation and reflection, at-tadabbur. That reflecting upon the meanings of these verses. What do these words actually mean? What is being said? How does this verse speak to my own personal context and reality? What is the guidance? What is the reminder that I can extract from these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So deep reflection, at-tadabbur, connecting with the Qur'an intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. And the last one is application. Trying our best to implement whatever guidance we recite in the Qur'an. And that should be our connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whatever command we come across, we try our best to implement it and obey it. Whatever prohibition we come across, we try our best to stay away from it to the best of our abilities. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, salah. We say how many times a day and when? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُ الزَّكَةَ Pay zakah. We say how much and to whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lower your gaze. We say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعَنَا We've heard and we've obeyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Stay away from riba. We've heard and we've obeyed. سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعَنَا right, That should be the nature of our relationship with the Qur'an. And if we fulfill these rights of the Qur'an, then we will not be among those who have abandoned and left the Qur'an. So again, recitation, memorization, listening, contemplation and reflection, and number five, application. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us among those who fulfill the rights of the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us to tawfiq the ability to recite the Qur'an, memorize it, listen to it attentively, reflect upon its meanings, and implement its guidance into our daily lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among Ahlul Qur'an, الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَتُهُ May the Qur'an be a proof for us, not against us. May the Qur'an be an intercessor for us on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us with the Qur'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not disgrace us through the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our good deeds that we did in this blessed month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, allow us to witness another Ramadan as well. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us among those who have earned your pardon, your forgiveness, and your mercy in this beautiful month. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless all of you and bless your families. Eidukum mubarak in advance. Kullu am wa antum bi khayr. Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum. Wa sallallahumma ala nabiyyina wa mawlana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. وبركاته